then other weird things start happening and that are not good. And then you're like, okay, well, there needs to be a better way. Um, another thing, repetition, you constantly repeating yourself with CSS. And obviously, I, at some point, this just proves the point of why repetition can sometimes not be good because I misspell repetition after the first time. And uh, <laughs> so <laughs> that's kind of why SAS is really great because you can just use a part of your CSS and then reference it later instead of constantly repeating it over and over and over again. And that can also drive you crazy. Um, and then the other thing was, oh my god, where was that button hex color? Where is that freaking button hex color? You can't like figure out how to change it. Um, that can be really frustrating too, especially if you're like off by like one like number in the hex number. You're like searching for that one hex number, but it was off just a little bit for whatever reason, and then you can't find it in the craziness of your CSS style sheet. Um, so yeah, those are some possible hurdles. Um, how SAS can make your life easier is can make it more organized and it can actually modularize your CSS. Um, like, like I was saying, you can use things like variables where you, you just say, okay, this is like my primary color, it's a variable, and then at the very top, you reference what that, what, what that is instead of constantly having to change, change all of the instances of it. Um, so that's really great with variables off the bat. Um, and then also, you can use partials, but you can have your own style sheet just for a particular piece of CSS and then import it in the SAS file and then it will just import that. So it's really helpful so you can keep things more organized and see where everything is instead of having one huge CSS file that's hard to find things. And more sanity as a result. And you can also use libraries out there. Bourbon and Neat are really great. So Neat is actually a responsive grid, just like some pi sometimes people will use Bootstrap. Um, and it's all works nicely with SAS. And then Bourbon is a mix-in library where you can utilize the entire library of um, what they have. And instead of like recreating everything from scratch, you can just import what they have to um, use on your own. Mm -hmm. And it's all open source, so it's free. So how you want to get started with SAS, there are some dependencies. You need to have Ruby installed before you install SAS. So if you're using a PC, Ruby does not come installed, so you will need to install Ruby first. If you have a Mac suite, you're already up and running with Ruby. So um, then you just need to download and install SAS. So in order to install SAS on your computer, you can either do it with an application such as CodeKit or Compass or Scout. And as you can see, some are paid and some are open source. Compass is open source. Or you can use your terminal and um, just hit gem install SAS. Now when I did it on my Mac, it gave me a bunch of errors. So what you want to do is instead of writing, if you run into errors, just hit sudo gem install SAS. And that should give you the writing permissions to install it on your computer. So just general rule of thumb, if you're on terminal and you're wanting to install something and it's giving you errors, just put sudo before it and see if it works. Usually does. Um, so variables, this is an example of a variable. Um, at, your, at the very top of your CSS style sheet, you would put like a font stack and then reference whatever that font is gonna be. Um, the um, money sign is basically what Sig signals to SAS that, hey, this is a variable. So it'll references at, reference it at the top. So let's say your client is telling you that, okay, I know that we really wanted to have the website be blue, but now we changed our mind and we want it to be all fuchsia. So you're like, great, okay, now I have to change every instance, but if you use SAS, then you can just, at the very top of your style sheet, change primary color to whatever that fuchsia color is, and that will save you some time and frustration. And then nesting, nesting is really um, cool because it uses, it almost uses like a different way of formatting things. So instead of having like, um, like nav and then putting ul and then putting your style, it's got all of it nested underneath it. So for nav, everything in nav, the ul for that would be this, the li would be this, the a would be this in that kind of a format instead of 
going crazy with you know, a bunch of different UL, nav, this particular element over and over again. Um, the only thing with nesting, you need to be careful not to go crazy with it, because then that can be complicated. If you nest within nest and within nest within nest, that can be really crazy um, and cause problems. So mixins are mixins are really great, and that's what um, Bourbon is. Bourbon has a whole library of mixins, which is awesome. So as you can see, it's almost it's kind of mathy. It's almost algebraic in a way because you're using variables. Um, so at the top, you would just say, "Here's a mixin for border radius," and then um, you would put the 10 pixels. So that would actually be insert into the variable for radius. So when it actually outputs, this is what it would be at the bottom. So we're just putting 10 pixels into this radius and then it outputs it for you. So SAS is extremely smart and it'll kind of do all this work for you. Um, and basically how it works is SAS will actually compile this CSS. So once it, it does all of its magic, it'll take whatever CSS you have in other files like partials and it will all bring it all into one CSS file. And just to bring it in context, if you wanted to start sassing um, away on your WordPress themes, there are some starter themes that already have it built in. Um, some Like It Neat is a good one, and I really like that one. It has all of the dependencies listed there, and it takes you step by step on how to get it installed onto your computer. So like, for example, that one, you're also gonna want to um, install Node and um, Runt to kind of, that will basically watch this your SAS file, and it will compile the CSS. Every time you make a change to your, to your CSS or your SCSS SAS file, it will automatically compile it to CSS for you instead of you having to do it manually. So that's really great. And then there's also a couple of other, um, there's actually a lot of WordPress starter themes out there, all open source, they're all on GitHub. Um, so you can pretty much just find ones that you like and um, mess around with it, so. And then here's some helpful links. Um, Sasslang, that's actually the website for SAS. Bourbon, which you can also very quickly get over to meet from that website. And also upload the slides as well for you guys so you don't have to like write it all down right now. Um, and then some other tools, if you want to install um, SAS with your terminal, um, I use iTerm2, it's pretty good. Um, and then this is the website for Ruby to install the dependency of SAS. And then Homebrew is also really great. If you are gonna use Terminal, I would really suggest that. It's very helpful. Um, and then Node as well, if you do wanna have a package manager to watch your SAS for you. And using, so for using something like that where you watch SAS and it compiles the CSS for you, for you automatically, there are three options, Runt, Gulp, and Webpack. I've heard a lot of really great things about Webpack. I haven't used it personally, but I've heard, I've, I've heard from a few people that it's really awesome and it's kind of like the newer thing, so it'd be fun to try out. So that's, that's it. Does anyone have any questions? Right, like I know some like it neat has a grunt file in there, so you would just um, npm install, and it will d it will basically install the dependency and dependencies for you, and then yeah, so the grunt file ha has all that in there, package for you. They may, and they have all the documentation on their GitHub page. They'll tell you be exactly step by step how to install everything and how to use it. Let me go back to that one, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I know there's there's definitely a way to do that. I haven't I haven't actually done that yet. I've always like worked with something that had CSS already installed, but there definitely is a way to do that. So. Mm -hmm. Um, not on me right now. I'm sure you could find that like on a GitHub page or something like that. Oh. 
Oh, are you talking about optimizing like performance? Well, it's still going to output your CSS. So I'm guessing it depends like how you would how you would code it. Um, but I don't normally think like SAS or CSS would like make your page load slowly um, more so than other things. But I'm not an expert on that. But yeah, that's true. Um, you could minify. Um, that's that's a good minify your CSS file and your JavaScript file would be good for that. Though it's not really something related to SAS, it's just something that you would want to do after after you create the file. Oh, yeah. yeah. Homebrew is, I'll just take you to the website because it's It's a package manager, so I find it I find it kind of useful because you can do homebrew and and see where things are. Like for Node, I I just used it to find out what what I had installed in Node and to see where things are. So it'll kind of like it's almost like a doctor. It'll say like, hey, you need to um, like clean your your keg, your kegs or your cellars or whatever, and it's just kind of helpful for that. Thanks.